one. Kansas Best Country kicks 106. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Matt Neal with you. And glad to be joined on the phone with uh, the writer and producer, director of the new film, Few Options, George Pappy Jr. George, thanks for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. George, I, uh, the, the film uh, starts Kenny Johnson, of course, of uh, Sons of Anarchy fame, also The Shield, and uh, right now Prime Suspect, which is on uh, NBC. Tell me a little bit about uh, getting Kenny for this project. We'll get into the plot of the movie in a minute, but uh, I love how you approached Kenny for this project. You didn't even know him, did you, when you pitched this to him? I did not know Kenny. Um, it jumped into my mind one day from knowing him, his work on The Shield that he'd be perfect, and I... I I looked on Facebook. It turned out we had one friend in common. Kenny's a pretty active Facebook guy. He's got yeah, he thousands of friends. And so I figured, what the heck? I, I, I tried friending him, and, well, you know, he friended me back. And uh, about a week later, I was able to message him about the, the movie, and he said he'd be willing to read the script. That is great. I saw the movie at the Venice Film Festival back in November and was blown away by it. Um, uh, you had a terrific cast. Obviously, uh, we talked about Kenny Johnson. We'll talk about him some more. Aaron Daniels is in it. Uh, David Marciano of Sons of Anarchy fame is in it. And you also got Rain Wilson from The Office and Michael Sheen. And, and all the Rain Wilson scenes, you filmed those in one night, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, it was actually an entire day. That was a long day. But, yeah, it was all one day with Rain. But we spread it out over the movie. So you know, most people are surprised when they find out we got all that in one day. It, it, it's quite a bit of presence in the movie for one day now george tell me uh, the movie stars again kenny johnson uh, of sons of anarchy fame and also the shield from fx uh kenny plays a uh a ex-con who's released after 22 years in prison so his entire adult life he's been in prison and you took a really hard look here at the uh, mandatory sentences handed down in the 80s tell me about your inspiration for this uh to write this script what what really got the wheels turning for you on this well, um, that story, especially at the time I, r I wrote this back in 2009, was getting in the news a lot. Um, all those these judges that had handed those mandatory sentences down were talking 20, 25 years ago, and they, some of these people are still in prison, and they tended to be the really low-end people that were like the dummy who got caught driving the drugs from point A to point B or the guy who was on the street selling the drugs. The people they worked for, who were the real, real bad guys, almost invariably made deals, and if they served any prison time, it was a couple of years, whereas these, you know, basically the low guy in the totem pole is still in prison. And a lot of these judges are saying, you've got to do something. This is wrong. I can't believe I had to send this guy to prison for 25 years. So I just started thinking about that. and God, I wonder what it would be like to be one of those guys, you know, yeah. especially leaving prison at a time like this when it's so hard to get a job for anyone, let alone someone that's been in prison for half their life. Well, and that's something I think you know not a lot of us think about very often, and I thought that was one of the reasons it was just such a great script idea was that uh, you just don't think about that. You know, when, and there's not you don't see any shows dedicated to what happens to a guy when he gets out of prison. We see all the time people go into prison in movies and on TV, but nothing about what somebody does getting out of prison. And I think one of my favorite scenes in the movie was he was walking down the street after being released from prison, and there's a guy talking on his Bluetooth, um, yeah, you know, the cell phone Bluetooth, and uh, Kitty's character, Frank Connor, thinks he's talking to him. I thought that was uh, an excellent, uh, excellent scene because you don't think about all the things you take for granted. Yeah, and that was, you know, I did a lot of brainstorming about what would seem odd to a guy who's been in prison since the 80s. And um, that was one of the ones I came up with because I remember that from. You know, when people first started using those things back in the late 90s, it, all the time that confusion would happen. But now we've totally tuned that out because we're so used to it. So that was one of several, probably was the most interesting one. But, yeah, that was, it was it's a subtle way you want to show just how out of touch the guy was. So I, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, I just thought that was, uh, I thought that was really just extremely well done. And uh, kind of made a, like you said, a subtle, but it really got the point across extremely well. Now, uh, this movie, George, tell us about the uh, challenges with uh, this movie. Obviously, we talked about some of the actors used, Michael Sheen, Rain Wilson. Michael Sheen had a small part as a, in the movie. But the challenges of doing this production and, and doing it, it's an independent film, obviously. How, tell us about putting that together on almost on your own and how you did that. Well, um, it really helped that I had... Um 
few friends like Michael Sheen and Rain Wilson yeah. that were willing to do scenes for me. So I wrote, you know, little parts for them specifically. Part of it was um, I wrote around things I had. Once I had the, the basic storyline, um, we shot a lot of it at the apartment complex where I lived that I knew I could shoot there. Um, I, you know, I, I wrote cars that I had access to into it and all those kind of things. And, and try and you know a lot of it's set in a parking lot at night. So I figured, geez, you can shoot that in about any parking lot anywhere. <laughs> and so, so that was part of the way we, we made it manageable. And um, we just also got a really good crew that was used to doing low budget movies. I think, to be honest with you, a lot of them were not used to working on movies this decent. I mean, they were, were used to working on really bad movies that you know, like horror movies and stuff mm-hmm. that are just all about, you know, <laughs> they're not about inter- that kind of entertainment, but, but they know how to make cheap movies, so that, that helped a lot. Um, yeah, and then, and then, of course, in the post-production, I mean, Kenny Johnson really came through for us. I, we, couldn't, uh, we shouldn't have been able to get the kind mm-hmm. of music we got, but he knew this wonderful uh, composer named Victoria, um, who lives down in, um, down in New Zealand, and she did an incredible job for us. He also got us the sound person through someone on The Shield, uh, she used to be Ridley, one of Ridley Scott's people in movies for Ridley Scott. So we got some incredible people through Kenny um, and some other connections like that. So I guess it's that old saying, you know, it, it's, it's sometimes it's who you know or who you know who they know, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you, you know what um, What I found, what, what, there was a lot of things about this movie I found very interesting, but, but I thought you know, the acting all the way around was superb. You didn't have just, I mean, obviously Kenny did a, an incredible job. You didn't have just one good actor and then you talked about some of those people being used to work on on low budget horror flicks everybody turned in a solid performance obviously or at least that's what we thought and when i was at the screening of the movie george one thing that really jumped out at me you know you're sitting there in the audience and you're kind of wondering what everyone else's reaction is going to be and we live in an age of cell phones blackberries iphones and nobody during the movie checked their cell phones people weren't looking around they weren't talking to each other people were really it held their attention very well you could tell they were really into that movie right away. And it's funny you should say that because I was telling Kenny that last night because mm-hmm. obviously Kenny couldn't be there that night when we screened it. He had to be at some Sons of Anarchy press thing. But I've noticed that that time, the time we screened it um, early last year, we had a sneak preview screening um, at my school. And then we also had had a rough cut screening the summer before um, before we finished editing the movie. And I noticed that all three times. So uh, I... You know, and that, that's the pleasure for me of sitting there, even though I've seen it so many times with an audience, is seeing how much it does seem to command their attention. So I always feel good when I notice that. But thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, no, that, that was something, you know, I went with my cousin. Uh, of course, you met her that night from Los Angeles. And, and you know, we were talking on the way over, and I said I was really excited about seeing the film because of what kind of actor Kenny was. And I'd really, I said, I think it's going to be really good. And she said, my concern is that, you know, she goes, the acting might really be good, but the script isn't good or the script is great and the ensemble cast isn't very good. Well, after the movie, she told me, she goes, she looked at me, she said, everything about that was good. The acting, the the writing, the production. And we were both blown away by it. And another thing we talked about, the post-production, the score of the, the movie, very good musical score. Tell us how uh, you got that. So that's uh, Victoria Kelly, a, an old friend of Kenny's. Um, they used to be roommates many years ago. She actually studied film scoring at USC. She lives down in New Zealand, and she's a really big deal down there. She does television um, for She's done Peter Jackson movies. I think she did about half of uh, The Lovely Bones. And in fact, I think I just talked to her at the end of this summer. She was the musical director for the Rugby World Cup, which New Zealand hosted this year. So the fact that we were able to get her, just because Kenny and her are friends, is just incredible. We shouldn't have been able to get someone that good. Uh, that, but you're right. Yeah. That was brilliant music. And then then there was the sound music, the actual music that had been recorded for someone else. We used a lot of that. This thing, a lot of it takes place outside of a club. So we yeah. always have music playing in the club. Obviously, you don't actually add that to post-production. And, a lot of that came through a friend of Victoria's, uh, this guy, um, Mark, um, Mark Clive Below, um, or De Clive Below, excuse me, but he's really very, very talented. So we got a lot of diverse music. Remember, Rain Wilson had a friend, gave us a couple of songs. Um, and then I just contacted this band down in, in Australia that I always really liked, and they kicked in three songs for us. So wow. we got some really fantastic music that normally you wouldn't get 
on a movie with this kind of a budget, but people just out of generosity and because they believed in the movie were willing. And like I said, a lot of it came through Kenny, mm -hmm. personal connection. Yeah, but, and working with Kenny, you talked about what a terrific actor he is, but what, what has impressed me from what you and I have talked about is just how much he's helped you behind the scenes, you know, with the post-production, with finding the music. How nice is it to work with someone that has, as well-known as Kenny is, as a good an actor, is a terrific, and he's a terrific actor, well-known, but also, you know, he put in a lot of hours with you and didn't hesitate to do anything he could to help. Now, that was just, that was just amazing. Um, I, I, I count myself so lucky in that sense. I mean, he's a, I, I count him as a good friend of mine, too. I, I love the guy. Uh, there was no attitude... It was none of this, I'm too good for this or that. Mm -hmm. well, I'll be in my trailer. We didn't have a trailer for poor Kenny. I mean, <laughs> Kenny just <laughs> changing his car sometimes and stuff. Kenny will do anything for you if he believes in it, and he really believed in this. Um, and even, you know, in fact, I think he and I spent more time together and, and, and just on the phone talking things through, figuring out what to do next in post-production than we actually ever did in production. And, he, and we did a lot in production. The guy... It's just, I, I think as a director, you would wish you had someone like this every time. Mm -hmm. From what I'm told, you don't. But, I mean, yeah, he just went way beyond what, what any actor, I think, would normally do in terms of his involvement and belief in the thing. Um, if I remember, uh, so, oh, if I remember I from just, one of our early, oh, sorry, go ahead. And I was just going to say, I, I think a lot of people never look back once they leave the set, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that couldn't be more different with Kenny, I mean. Well, and, and I know that, uh, you know, you've talked several times in interviews about how he doesn't like watching his own performance. For, so for him to be that involved in post-production is even more impressive. But, boy, I was blown away about how, how you and, and Kenny both prepared for this movie with Kenny actually spending time locked up in L.A. County Jail. Um, and yeah. you told me that the guards put him in. They didn't even know who he was. They, he, the guards knew, but the, they, he didn't tell the prisoners who he was or what he was doing. Yeah, no, he had him throw him in there one day for something like five or six hours. Um and uh, only the guards knew who he was. All the other inmates didn't know who he was, and he wanted it that way, so he could kind of approach them on, a, on an even footing, and he talked to a lot of people about what it's like to be in, you know, incarcerated for long periods of time, what that does to you. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, amazing what he was willing to do, and he was able to do that because he has a lot of connections in law enforcement mm -hmm. from the S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. and also from Saving Grace. So yes. And then, and then just the dedication he showed, and we spent, I'm not exaggerating, probably 45 hours together face-to-face, -to -face, mm -hmm. three, four hours at a time, just talking about stuff. And, and we were on the phone constantly, emailing, texting constantly for about two and a half months leading up to the movie. So well, and he, the time we were, we were on the set, we knew each other really well, which I think was a big help. And I think this is a great compliment. He makes it look so easy. You know it's not easy, but he makes it look so He does such an incredible job and you talked about that scene from the shield where he where, where when kenny was in the shield where he had an ulcer and just by the look on his face you felt like he really had an ulcer and in this movie there were some scenes and i talked about this with my cousin afterwards several times that it wasn't what kenny said that that really hit home it was how he said it or how he looked in a certain scene you know it's just, it's just an unbelievable job Yes, and that's that was one of the things I wrote in the first email on Facebook to him when I asked him if he would read it. I said, you know, what you did on The Shield was so much about the way you carried yourself in your face. I mean, you looked at, at him in that one season when he got the ulcer, supposedly, and he looks like he has an yeah. ulcer. And it's not so much anything he's saying or doing, it's just the way he's carrying himself. I said, that's what this role is about, largely. There's some long stretches where he doesn't talk at all. And I think you're the perfect guy for it. And I was right. He was. And he did. He proved it. You know, he 